Welcome to this uh, episode of our integration podcast. My name is Mattia Maggioli and today I'm joined by Michael Nevin who developed this integration POC between uh, Forcepoint and Next Generation Firewall and AWS Transit Gateway. This integration POC automates the deployment inside AWS of redundant next generation firewall engines together with an AWS Transit Gateway. The engines deployed as EC2 instances are configured using AWS Lambda so that they report to and are managed by an existing SMC. And all this is accomplished with a single CloudFormation template, which ultimately enables connectivity between on-premise users and AWS resources over the tunnel set up between the next generation firewall engines and the transit gateway. And of course, all traffic is secured by the policies configured in the next generation firewall engines. So Nev, I'll hand it over to you. So we'll start in the SMC. We'll need to configure the API for the credentials as well as the TLS certificate. Now, these are the same steps that we showed in the previous uh, episode, so we won't uh, go in details, but everything is documented in the integration guide. So using the zip file that you can download from the link in the guide, we would have, we would have taken it and dropped it into a new uh, Ubuntu machine. It's not going to be deployed here. We just need it, we just need it here to, to actually build it. We'll open that up and we'll extract it. Where It doesn't matter where we're going to extract it, but we're just going to do it in the desktop. And I'll open up the config.json because we'll need to edit this file using the credentials we would have taken from the SMC API such as the, the TLS certificate as well as the API credentials. So here we have a few parameters that the customer needs to enter and these are the only parameters that are required for the integration. That's right. Once we have filled out the, the parameters in the config as well as the SMC file we would open up a terminal here and now we can run the package.sh file. This will generate two new files. One is the zip file that contains the code as that will be deployed to the Lambda using the S3 bucket that we, will, we must also create, as well as the template that we're gonna use in CloudFormation to deploy the stack. With these two files now, we must open up AWS and we're gonna drop this folder into a bucket that you may already have or create a new bucket just for this deployment. In the bucket that we're using for this integration, I've created a folder called lambda-functions and another folder called config-smc. In here, we're going to drop the mydeploymentpackage.zip that we would have created with the shell script earlier. This is the AWS Lambda that's going to be used as part of the CloudFormation template. In the CloudFormation dashboard, we're going to create a stack and we're going to upload a template file. The template file would have been generated earlier on the, the next machine that you use to run the package.sh file. The file we're looking for is this tgnjw2engines.json. We'll open that up. The name doesn't really matter. Call it whatever whatever you want. Something descriptive, of course, is always better. Uh, scroll to the bottom of this section and click Next. And again, to the bottom of this section and click the I acknowledge that AWS CloudFormation might create IAM resources. These are important for the, the stack to be created. Now, I guess, IAM permissions are always critical, but just to make sure our users are not frightened with this warning here, the only permissions that the CloudFormation requests are the minimum permissions that are necessary to deploy the AWS component. And again, the code of the CloudFormation can be inspected before running if anyone wants to have a better understanding of what permissions are requested. The stack will have kicked off and you'll start to see events populate. You can, of course, refresh the page and see the events cre being created. At some point, it will get to the creation of the Lambda and the Lambda will stall for some time before creating. This is just to give the CloudFormation template enough time to spin up the EC2 instances and then allow that to configure the SMC. If we go back to the SMC, we'll still see nothing on the actual engine side of things, but these will start to populate with the engines as they are being created. This will go through a few states uh, one state being you'll see two engines, but they'll be in white. This will mean that the engines are now being able to talk down to the SMC through the API. They will then go through another phase where they'll be yellow, where they'll say upload, uploading policy or waiting to upload policy. That's going to wait for the Lambda to kick off and do the rest of the configuration before allowing the policy to be uploaded to the next-gen firewall in AWS. At this point now, some of the events have slowed down. What's happened is we're waiting for the Lambda to actually spin up and do the configuration. If we go back to the SMC, we already see that the Lambda has actually started up now. The SMC was just waiting on the Lambda to configure them and start the policy upload. 
policy should be uploading now at this point for each engine. Well, I guess th the lights are green. So both next generation firewall engines received uh, their initial policy, all the handshake, the one time key has been uh, exchanged, a new one has been set up. So the full setup of the firewalls with the security management center is complete. That's right. What about the IPsec tunnels? Yeah, I've got a branch, as you can see the tunnels here. And these tunnels are between the next generation firewall engines and the transit gateway? That's right. Okay. So the automation also configures IPsec tunnels between the next generation firewall engines hosted in EC2 to the transit gateway to bridge the traffic between the devices. And once this is done, I guess the administrator of these firewall engines can also create tunnels to other next generation firewall engines, for example, the ones on premise. So the traffic on premise can be bridged to the AWS side and go through the transit gateway by transiting through these next generation firewall engines hosted in AC2. The integration is complete at this point. There's nothing left to do. Back on the AWS page, we'll go back to the EC2 instances. Make sure I'm in the same region that I deployed my CloudFormation to. And we'll go to running instances. Here in the EC2 page, we can see the next gen firewall engines have been created and are, run, are in a running state. They now, Nev, just one question. Those uh, next generation firewall engines hosted in EDC2, uh, where are they from? What image? Those images are based on the Forcepoint next gen firewall BYOL, bring your own license AMIs that are in the AWS marketplace. You actually acquire those AMIs yourself through the through this integration and use them in the config file when doing the deployment. Okay. So uh, I guess they just need the ID of the AMI. Yeah. If you want to get the AMI ID, refer to the documentation. It walks you through all the steps to doing it. Fantastic. So now just a quick recap of this integration POC. This integration POC automates the deployment inside AWS of redundant next generation firewall engines together with an AWS transit gateway. The engines deployed as EC2 instances are configured using AWS Lambda so that they report to and are managed by an existing SMC. And all this is accomplished with a single CloudFormation template, which ultimately enables connectivity between on-premise users and AWS resources over the tunnel set up between the next generation firewall engines and the transit gateway. And of course, all traffic is secured by the policies configured in the next generation firewall engines. So, Nev, thanks again for another extremely automated and extremely important POC. You're very welcome. <laughs> and thank you for watching this episode of our integration podcast and stay tuned for more episodes.